I did not see if they mulliganed or anything. Uh, maybe I'll ask that real quick, actually. Hang on. Covered is land. By the way, second. guys, did either of you mulligan? No. Okay, cool. I've never Thanks. mulliganed before. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, I'm checking out these lists now. Yes. Gothmog says he was helping Catherine warm up for tomorrow. Yes, Catherine's playing on stream tomorrow. Nice. Flintstigator, thanks for the follow. What kind of decks do, uh, does Catherine like to play? Catherine plays Reanimator, Eldrazi, Sneak and Show. Oh, Flintstigator, sorry, that was a sub. Thank you for the sub. I said follow, my bad. Nice. Um, what else does she play? Anything unfair, says Gothmog. This is true. <laughs> nice. Right. Ponder to start the game, by the way, for Phil. Brainstorm Ponder is uh, what Phil likes to play, I would say. Yeah, Phil's usually on some kind of blue deck, but doing broken things. Kaplan is here. He's playing next round, and he's a two-month sub. Congrats to him. Do you think Jesse metagame versus Time Sieve? I don't think so, so... <laughs> <laughs> Phil's Not ridiculous likely. deck has Time Sieve featured in it, so we'll see. Hold on while I pick that one up again. That one's Sacrifice 5 Artifacts, taking an extra turn after this one. This is uh, Vintage Playable. <laughs> Have you ever seen this card resolved in your life? <laughs> no. Uh, how does this win? <laughs> now... Uh, to people joining us for the first time, it might sound like we're making fun of Phil's deck. We're actually not. We appreciate the spice. This is a spicy deck. This is something yeah. to watch. And to, uh, to quote uh, the Leaving Legacy guys, this is totally galaxy brain to me. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's like, all right, you're going to get, what, five out there? And then like try to, maybe there's a tinker target or a, t a tinker type of interaction and get the time sieve and then go infinite turns i don't know it's got to be in the deck right yeah well okay so he has okay just gathering my thoughts on this the first time he played this deck on stream he had urza in the deck and jesse okay. and i were talking about before the stream today urza is no longer there we'll have to ask phil why we don't know why and kinnon is still in the deck kinnon um from Ikoria. I don't even know right. if I'm pronouncing the name right. Kenan? Kenan? Kenan Bonder Prodigy. That's an Engineered Explosives on three, I believe he just dropped. Oh. Let's see. That could be... Is that going to hit anything on three? I... I don't know why he picked three. Let's take a look at Jesse's <laughs> list. There's so many things going on. I guess it yeah. hits Oko and Uro. Okay. So that makes sense. Tensi Terry is here. What's up, Tensi Terry? Leon is here. Two months sub. Leon is here. He's playing in round three. Sub Leon. Actually, actually speaking of uh, complex combos, Leon could probably tell us exactly what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we have these two spicy decks in round one but we also have a spicy deck in round two and round three tonight so it's it's going to be if, if you appreciate the spicy emote that is available uh on this channel you're going to be jamming it tonight i would if, if i was a viewer so was that emote like inspired by tabasco i, I gotta ask i mean I, I love tabasco but i also love sriracha yeah so my partner Teresa, who designed the emote the spicy emote that everybody keeps jamming Loves hot sauce. Nice. Love it. <laughs> Avid viewer of the Hot Ones show. And, What's that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you haven't watched Hot Ones? Ah, never show? heard of it. Nope. It's basically a show where a bunch of celebrities come on and talk to some guy, but they eat really insanely spicy chicken wings during the interview. Oh, God. That sounds so masochistic. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So it's like you're, you're doing an interview about a movie or whatever, sweating profusely. Trying to down glasses of water. <laughs> that sounds miserable. Oh my gosh. It, it's a funny show. Um, <laughs> the interviewer is pretty good. But uh, anyway, it's totally off topic. But that's how the, that's how the spicy emote came about. That's fair. <laughs> Here's a row. So, oh, I thought the 
engineer's explosives was actually on the other side, so not Jesse's. There we go. It's is Jesse wouldn't set it at three. Oh, I can see why Bill you would it. Okay. Yeah. Positioning my cameras like on different screens right now, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. <laughs> That's a All Mox right. Opal for Phil, by the way, and a scrap trawler comes okay. down. A little bit of lag on the uh, feeds from the players right now. I apologize. I'll try to get that right. Not much I could do about it at the moment. Well, Scrap Trawler is also at three. So when that dies, also right. takes out Uro. Right. I don't think that's going to happen, though, with it, especially with that uh, Karakas out there, too. A swords on Scrap Trawler in response to Mox Opal, it looks like. Yeah, he's not going to let that uh, <coughs> Scrap Trawler get some value. What's up, Jube Ninja? Jube Ninja's here. KCI player. Yeah, remember KCI? I remember KCI for modern, but it's one of those, like, you know, galaxy brain types that, or maybe it's just so technical that it takes a master, and I am not a master of that stuff. <laughs> it's too many sure. triggers. It's like trying to learn elves on the on day one. You just like too many things coming at you, and you're like trigger, 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 trigger happy. This is true. RPF says Roland has an echo. Is that true? I'm not hearing an echo. Echo, echo. I thought I, I muted everything. Yeah, it sounds okay to me. A little echo. I'm yes. not sure. Echo trigger. <laughs> may, may, yeah, maybe your headphones were. All right, let me let me. Maybe my headphones are too loud. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe my headphones are too loud. It's all your fault. Yeah, they might have been picking up my headphones. I'm not sure. Well, I turned down the AC a little bit, so yeah. All right. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Yeah, same. No more echo. Okay, so it must have been my headphones. Sorry about that. It's all good. Fix it up. All right. Um, where are we in this game? Astrolab resolve now. Yeah. What is? What, so Jesse's trying to grind this out, right? Euro control is this what it is, or? <laughs> it's uh. So he said this was. I'm I'm just repeating what he told me. This okay. is Anurag's Sharknado list. All right. And it's a control deck with Shark Typhoon to uh, to win the game, among other things. But Shark Typhoon is the big, the big payoff for playing this list. It's almost a five color. It is a five color deck. Wow. Yeah. I just noticed the sideboard also like has some red cards. Um, does it? Yeah, a red elemental blast and a pyroblast. Oh yeah, for some reason my mind overlooked those. Yeah, I was looking at like red or sorry green blue for the Simic side, and then white for swords, and we got uh, black for Thoughtseize. Black for Thoughtseize. He's got Dead of Winter. Which I love. I love Dead of Winter. That's one, one of, of my favorite cards from recent years. Yeah, it's a good Plague one. Engineer, another one of my favorite cards from the last few years. That's um, like one of the most hated cards. <laughs> yeah. I guess it depends who, who you ask, right? <laughs> it was so good that you had to ban it from Tribal. This deck is five color and has back to basics. This deck is sweet. Ah, oh, it's just mean. I, I just got locked out recently by like back to basics. Oh. Doesn't look. I, I feel like this was just uh, so, such a good deck to just grind with. Yeah, it ha it has a lot of value cards in it, like Oro and Oko, obviously. But mm -hmm. um, it also has Sylvan libraries in the main. It has weird stuff like Cling to Dust and Surgical Extraction in the main. Yeah, um, and that's stock of what Honorog's running. I think. Jesse made some of his own tweaks. Okay. But more or less, these decks are full of just five color good cards. Cool. Uro's here. 
I know a lot of you in the audience tuned in tonight hoping to see Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Swing in for six. And drop a land. And gain three life. And draw a card. <laughs> many, many people tuned in tonight just to see Uro resolve. <laughs> <laughs> but he can bounce, too. <laughs> can bounce it, yeah. Well, now he escaped it, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, that uh, that draw engine that Uro provides is kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Leon's mind is blowing a five-color deck running back to basics. <laughs> Scratch roller. Sacramatic star to draw a card. Trigger, bring back Opal, I guess. It's got to be Opal. I don't think he has any other option. Yeah. Some. Something's happening. It's counting. <laughs> Monka, thanks for the resub. What's up, Monka? Oh, he can bring out. He can bring back EE. E. That's right. Oh yeah, I forgot that was in there. Set it back to three. Lose his scrap trawler. Oh, I guess he might just block with it. Swords uh, on scrap trawler in response. Okay. Never mind. That's the second swords on uh, scrap trawler. So that's putting a damper on Phil's strategy here. All right. He does get back Opal though. We read the first time. Uh, make it some mana. Make it some mana. What does Phil do about Uro? <sighs> Apparently not much. Combo does his off. Deck, does, yeah, <laughs> seriously. But does his deck have any way of dealing with this creature? Doesn't. Well, he could block it with Strix, I guess. Yeah, and then take five to the head. Isn't it Trample, too? No, it's not Trample. Oh, it isn't Trample. Oh, that's good. All right. Yeah. I gave Uro too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> if it had Trample, that card would just be so stupid. Oh, I mean, we're, we're faster to uh, yeah, say goodbye to that guy. But, you know, it's, uh, this is a... I, I'm glad that it's, like, still answerable. I, I like Uro. I think it's a cool card. Yeah. It might be really powerful, and some people find it annoying, but mm -hmm. I think it's cool. has some interesting interactions. I've, I've been able to, like, fight it with uh, Eliminate more recently. Um, tossing mm. that into my Grixis deck. Uh, can't yeah. say it's like the best thing, but at least it, it takes bo takes care of both Uro as well as uh, Oko. I know you don't play Historic, but um, when I was... I mean, when I play Historic, one of my favorite Planeswalkers is Kaya, or Zabu mm -hmm. Serper, and she does work against Uro decks. Just exile it right out of the yard. It's pretty good. Oh, she gets to remove some stuff. And I gain two life all the work that you did <laughs> Leon yeah. discussing his 2017 MTG finance decisions <laughs> <laughs> yep that uh, getting a trap back then is uh, definitely a lot better than uh, trying to buy a trap now yeah one of the um, ideas I had for down the road, a format to try on stream would be no reserveless legacy. How do you think that would be? Um, I was gonna say Leon Roland. Uh, so no more duels. <laughs> no more duels. No more weird stuff like Tabernacle and Null Rod. Um, so you don't really lose a lot. You play pre-modern, right? <laughs> no, I think I think archetypes would be mostly the same. I, I don't know. The, the mana bases, I think, still have something to do with, like, you know, shaping up what we're able to see here. Um, Astrolabe's going to... Uh, I guess we're, we're still on a lot of uh, snow-covered basics. So you could have these five-color control decks. True. Hmm. Maybe fetches and, like, duels don't really matter that much. But, I mean, consistency definitely matters, too, so... I feel like if uh, if any deck is going to really dominate there, it, it might even be Reanimator. 
is just so fast. That's true, yeah. I don't know what cards other than Badlands you would lose. Sword Equip. Sword Equip is here, our, one of our bits leaders. Sword Equip, um, I, I don't know if the uh, email went through, but some of our... Um, the people we've emailed about playing on stream, it's gone to junk, so make sure you check your junk inbox. Sword Equip. Just a note on that. But I guess you still have Force of Will. That's not on the reserve list. Force of Will is not on the reserve list, nope. Yeah, so Force of Will will hold this format together. Just for you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, would be, that... it, it would be something fun to try. Yeah. I mean, Somewhere I think it... on the scale between modern and legacy, we'd land. Ancient Tomb still legal. City of Trader is not legal. Mm. Interesting. No Mox Diamond. No LED. So kind of combo out, right? Yep. Yeah, combo needs the LED boost of four Lotuses. Death and Taxes seems good. I agree. Food chain is still legal. <laughs> That's all Leon cares about. He doesn't care about anything else. It's just Elvish Spirit Guide, Ancient Tomb, Food Chain. <laughs> yeah. It costs let, me three, get, right? let me just get a <laughs> let me just get a life total check from these people. Sure. Can I just get a life total check from you guys? I'm at twelve and he's at twelve. Okay. I, think. Yeah. I was way, way off. Thank you guys. Sure. Um yeah, yeah. CMC three. I was off by like 40 life total. <laughs> <laughs> There's been Sorry a few swords. Infect loses only trot. That's true. I don't know. It would be interesting, I think. MTG wow. Grixis Delver Legacy just followed. I think you tuned into the right channel. Nice. I am a fan of that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It's probably you. It's probably you under your oh, that, that, <laughs> secret <laughs> secret screen name. <laughs> you know, I, I I think I told you the other week, right? My secret screen name's uh what shop three ball. <laughs> oh yeah, well now now it's not a secret. Yeah, it's, oh now it's not a secret anymore. But that was the one that I subscribed to this channel to with uh I think there was the the Amazon Prime sub. So I was like, all right, let's get that sub subscription up a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the other Twitch channels that uh, everybody watching also watches roland's got all the kinds of secret screen names he's harassing people with <laughs> workshop trinosphere that's my other one yeah <laughs> burn would be good that's true i would probably run burn just i'm running that in pre-modern right now and it's just like it's so good i mean i watched uh greg brillerit do it last week against boston and that was a that was, you know, Burn sh being showcased once again. I mean, I think, I, I don't know if uh, Greg was actually doing four brainstorms or not, but uh, he, adding that into his deck has added consistency and he just like destroys us at our LGS. Force of Will hard cast on Scrap Troller, I think. Mm -hmm. I might have missed an attack. I'm talking so much, but <laughs> yep, that's a scoop. Okay. Yeah, this one was like. Phil under control. Uh, no, I just play Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just basically Legacy, right? Yeah, I'd rather play Legacy all day. <laughs> but but you but you unban like all the cards that are banned in Legacy, basically. Unban all the cards. They're they're now restricted, right? Yeah. Huh. So, oh, they're getting started here. All right. Delta. Days with shock seems bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh crap wrong res life totals sorry so Phil's strongest play turn one is probably just what astrolabe yep yeah oh, ponder Jesse's pondering Jason Murray's here, and he says he can probably build a broken breach deck for no reserve list vintage. Yeah, you can have Soul Ring. You can have all all the like mana crypt. Um, I don't know. I know that's a stretch. That's probably not that fun. Legacy Legacy is probably better. <laughs> Just interesting to think about. Vintage world is broken. <laughs> yeah. 
brainstorm yeah, I'm, here. I'm actually really glad that they banned uh, uh, Underworld Breach in Legacy because it just did not make sense at all. <laughs> just seeing some of the things that it was doing. I don't know. I see there's been a, a push for Luris to get unbanned in Legacy. Are you in favor of such a thing? Nope. <laughs> I... I I think the uh, anything that uh, for me, Ikoria was like, all right, let me take a break for a second. Let me grab, you know, uh, get my breath again so I can just uh, dive right into the next set. But some people, you know, they really loved Ikoria. I actually taught a couple of uh, people. Uh, I, I taught my brother-in-law and also my nephew how to play during Ikoria. And they found it like a little overwhelming, but there was a, it was a very well built set for limited, right? Yeah. But for constructed, that's where it's just like uh, there's a lot of broken stuff. Like that Luris coming in, <laughs> I think it was just the Lotus Luris play that just like completely threw me off. But you know, I, I I could see how it's a little bit more balanced if you want to bring it from from your sideboard, that type of thing. Yep. Well, here's Kinnan. Whatever that means. Yeah, what is Kinnon's abilities here? It's, uh, yeah, whenever you top, tap a non land permanent for mana, add one mana of. Okay. So does that create double mana with the Astrolabe? Yes. So he's putting, uh, blue and colorless mana, it appears, on the, on the field. For some reason, hmm. I'm trying to follow this just as much as everybody at home. So two colorless mana, I guess, and one blue mana. I don't know where colorless mana came from. That's a colorless energy from Pokemon, isn't it? Yeah, I was about to say it's like <laughs> it's a Pokemon card. Did they always have colorless energy in Pokemon? I don't remember that from when I played as a kid. No idea. Should pull the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, really. All right, so if he's ramping up into trying to activate Kinnon, it's seven mana? Probably not likely, it right? It looks like four mana now. But I'm not sure what that does. Play a Scrap Trawler? <laughs> Okay. Uh, Phil's got to be doing some math here. It, it might be like another play another Kinnon or something and try to... Nope. Brainstorm. Okay. This is the kind of thing where, it, you know, I'm playing IRL against Phil and he brings a deck like this and he's doing all this stuff and I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> Can you just explain to me what's going on? Well... In my mind, Phil's mind is probably about five out, so <laughs> it's fair to let him just do his thing. <laughs> yeah. Chromatic Star. Okay. So he pops that somehow and draws? Oh, he could just sack it with mana, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, and it'll make some more mana when it uh, creates mana, right? Okay, here's Dr. Foundry. No mana floating. Okay, so that must have been white mana. Not colorless. Uh, okay. I guess he confused us with the colorless energy. There. That, that's what had me lost, because I was like, I don't get where this colorless is going. So or coming created, from. He needed white mana to cast the Thopter Foundry? Yeah, that's it's blue-white or blue-black, right? Yeah. So he must have tapped out of his black source already. Well, in this spot, let's see, Thopter Foundry. So, well, it looks like Jesse is now taking some action. So, Jesse will get his Sylvan Library activation. I think, we, I think we're past that now. He's uh, in main phase. I don't think he drew any extra cards, though. Did he forget? I, I didn't even see him do anything. Yeah, he might have forgot the Sylvan Library. <clears throat> I 
<laughs> it's kind of funny how confused we are by this entire game. <laughs> like we're actually genuinely having trouble keeping up with what's going on. There's a few things going on. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of there's like going to be five artifacts on. Yeah, there's five artifacts over on uh, Phil's side, so that means he could take an extra turn with time save, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, all I you're get. Right. <laughs> time save, you've taken an extra turn. Looks like Phil has three cards in hand. Yeah. Um, Jesse must have been like considering at least abrupt decaying or keeping that option open. In instead, I guess he's going to source the plowshares here to remove something. Maybe it's Kinnon. I think Kinnon's the only target. Yep. Yeah. Before things get out of control, which I guess by next turn they could have. <laughs> it seems people like the idea of uh, no reserve list legacy. I'm going to write this down. All right. I'm going to have to start sleeping up something. Do you have sh sets of shock lands and stuff? Nope. <laughs> I'll just play basics. <laughs> 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 It'll get me there. I'll just play blue, gr blue green madness. It's, it's going to come back. <laughs> it could. Yeah. You're playing on Wednesday. Do you have any idea what you're going to play yet? Do you want to reveal? Uh, I guess. <laughs> you don't I could have play, to. Yeah, I could, I could play like Grixis again. I actually tried it out at the uh, uh, Magic, uh, the, the Paper Legacy Discord event on Saturday. And I uh, got my butt handed to me by Rug, and that didn't feel so great, but... Um, Probably, if I were going to go Delver, it'd probably be blue-red. Um, that's one cool. option. But I did also get beat by a really cool red prison deck. So, um, trying out some new tech. I dig it. So it's one of those two, I think. Tensi Terry says this deck should splash white for Enlightened Tutor. Or run transmute artifacts, maybe. Yeah, maybe uh, word of invention could be good as well. Yeah, I was thinking that um, uh, Phil would have had some kind of tutor ability here. Yeah, with a lot of one ofs, it seems weird not to, right? Yeah. But I don't know. These artifact decks. This user says they're running. Goblin Engineer as a budget option? That seems kind of neat. Goblin Engineer. So, back before um, New York City was shut down, I remember... Do you remember this? Uh, Phil was playing a Thopter Sword deck at the shop, and I think he had Goblin Engineer in it, right? Do you remember this? Um, I think so. But he was also doing like this Ox of Oganus thing, too. Right. So that yeah. kind of confused me. Uh, but Phil has definitely done some Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek uh, combo stuff. Uh, I'm not sure where that, like, it might have been like a one of or two of Goblin Engineer. Yeah, I remember it had Goblin Engineer and Urza, I think. Yeah. If I remember the, correctly. The Urza part, um, he definitely got me on being able to tap any of his artifacts for blue mana. That was a surprise to me that I totally mis overlooked that. <laughs> That's when the car was brand new. Yeah. But Engineer might be just a little bit too weak, or is it just like a big bolt target? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Goblin Engineer, yeah. Because just as you said, that Plague Engineer hit the board, and I was confused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your favorite Thank you, Aura Locks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Aura Locks. Yep, we got new decks all evening, so make sure you stay tuned. Next round should be sweet, no matter who wins here. I'm assuming that Engineer is naming Thopter, by the way. It's got to be. Yeah, I can't let that... Uh, the weird infinite combo that happens with that deck happen. 
Modern Grinding Beach Combo Deck. I think I know which one you're talking about. That was a very brief existence, was it not? Oh, I can't remember what that is. Yeah, I had a Grinding Station and Underworld Breach. And I think some kind of a banning hit that deck. The but breach. I'm not sure which card it was that got banned. <laughs> Is Underworld Breach banned in Modern? No. Uh, oh, right? no. Right, wait. Hmm. I'll have to check. I don't think it is. Modern, banned, and rejected. It's been a little bit since I've seen uh, or checked out the modern list. I think it's changed a bunch, but um, it's possible that Mox Obel. Uh, oh, Mox Obel got banned. I think that's yeah. what it was. Yes. There you go. And Underworld Breach is not banned. Yep, it was just Mox Opal. Cool. So without... Um, back to... <laughs> not to talk about No Reserveless Legacy the entire evening, but just one last thought on that. If Lion's Eye Diamond is out, Mox Diamond is out, all the other Reserveless cards are out, can Underworld Breach and cards like that be unbanned? Safely? Yeah, Lotus Metal, right? <laughs> you got Lotus Petal, but, I mean, is that really that exciting? Lotus Petal, Brain Freeze? I guess. It's not as not as ridiculous as LED, though. Yeah. LED was what powered that deck. I don't, I don't think you can. Um, I wouldn't... I'd probably play some kind of prison deck, because of knowing that is not as broken. But, uh... Red Prison would be good with uh, the Simeon Spear Guides, Chrome Mox, and... Oh, yeah, you get Chrome Mox uh, to try to do some more broken stuff. Well, Jason's saying that Lotus Petal was pretty exciting. You could easy execute with that, but... That's just one option. I don't know. We'll save the uh, No Reserve List Legacy ban list for another day. For sure. All right, Plague Engineer down. <clears throat> it's hard to name a good one with Plague Engineer, but it seems like... Wait. Now that it's off the table. I have a feeling that Phil's going to take over this game a little bit, but uh, that, there's that Soul Glide Lantern out there still. Yeah, LED made the deck really, really powerful. I think just having Petal while it still could be explosive, makes a deck enough less powerful is what I was trying to say. Right. All right. Swinging with Scrap Troller and Mirror Retriever, it looks like. I'm going to get a life total check. Sure. Is Dr. Foundry a blue card? It sure is. Okay. Uh, life total check for you guys? I'm at 7. I th think you're at 20. Okay. Cool. I have fetched twice, but you gained me two off the Kinnon, so I should be at 20, yeah. Um, Alright, thanks. I'll blast the... Crap. What did you say? He said he was at 7, right? <laughs> oh, I couldn't <laughs> hear. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think he said 7. Island Del Rogo, thanks for the sub. That's probably my favorite play. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right. Storm counts three already in round one. Thank you very much, everybody. Awesome. Yeah, he says seven. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have bad listening comprehension sometimes. All right, so there's a there's a uh, what's it called? The snitch. <laughs> The Harry Potter snitch stopped her. <laughs> yeah, I have those same tokens. They're dope. Uh, was that RK post? Yeah. Nice. I have not seen those before. Those are really cool. Yeah, they're nice. Were you a Harry Potter fan? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, I I think I read the first four or five books, and then uh, I think the movies like at one point started coming out. Was it? midway through or something and just started watching the movies instead. I got lazy. <laughs> cool. 
but uh, I've not gone back and reread them or anything. But um, I know my wife has uh, uh, definitely put on the audiobooks for us while we've gone on long drives, and it's been uh, interesting hearing those stories again and like kind of comparing it to all the things that we missed. So just in case anybody missed it, Red Blast hit Thopter Foundry. A bunch of Thopters were created, and Soul Guy Lantern then exiled the graveyard with Thopter Foundry in it. So it's pretty good for Jesse, despite staring life. down four Thopters. A little low on life, though. All right. What's uh, Jesse got as an answer for those tokens? Anything particular? Dead of except... Winter. Oh, yeah. Dead of Winter will take care of that. Yep. If he has Dead of Winter, he's in good shape. I like Dead of Winter. It's just like, I think that might have replaced Toxic Deluge. Oh, for sure, yeah. At least until uh, there's Snow Hate, mm -hmm. Dead of Winter is a better, better option, I, I would say. Yeah. Toxic Daily is probably better in Commander, though, from what I hear. Just a little more broad. Yep. And the paying life thing could actually be a benefit. All kinds of weird stuff happens in Commander. Yeah. <laughs> Pay 20 life. You're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some obscure card that says whenever a creature gets minus X minus X, you win the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. right, here's Uro. Uro here to save the day. Yep. Is he casting this, or is he just exit? Or yeah, it's escaping. Escaping. Okay. Yep. There we go. What's up, Beyond Sadistic? Recommending the UK versions of Harry Potter audiobooks. Awesome. I I have read all of the Harry Potter books, at least of the original like series, not the uh, Fantastic Beasts or anything like that. Ah, nice. I, I think we were making it through. Um, was it? What do they call it? It's not the Sorcerer's Stone. Is it the Sorcerer's Stone? That's the first one, right? Yeah. Oh, Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> I was thinking Sorcerer's Spyglass. Uh, <laughs> The yeah, the Philosopher's Stone was the uh, the way they they called it in the UK, and uh, I love the accent. It gives a little bit more charm to it, and I think the uh, yeah the audiobook was definitely right on. Cool. What do you think about? <laughs> I'm just coming up with stupid shit tonight. <laughs> what do you what do you <laughs> what do you think about a Harry Potter expansion? For Magic the Gathering, would you be against that? It's your it's your decision to make. They will either make it or not make it based on your decision alone, Roland. It's up to you. A hundred percent yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally make it because anything better than you know Kamigawa, like that's my <laughs> that's my weak spot there. It's like I. I like you I don't want Kamigawa. I, I don't want Kamigawa again. Okay. Um, <laughs> I I need some other themes to go along with this uh this game here, and uh, we've had dinosaurs. No, but it, it's going to be straight up Harry Potter though. It's not going to be like Harry Potter Magic the Gathering version. It's going to be there's going to be a Planeswalker card for for Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be. There's going to be oh. what's that? What's the blonde haired kid that's that's evil? Uh, Draco Malfoy. Draco Malfoy is going to have a card. He's going to be a legend. <laughs> no, it's going to be like the weakest legend out there, man. <laughs> It'll have like, uh, can kill Albus Dumbledore. Albus, Dumbled Albus Dumbledore is going to be, uh, like better than Oko Planeswalker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to business. Where are we in this game? <laughs> yeah. Uh, still playing Harry Potter, so <laughs> I think if uh, Jesse can just start swinging in with that Uro, he might be back in business. 
Okay, those of you that are good Googlers, find out if Harry Potter is Hasbro licensed property or whatever. You know, I've seen Harry Potter cards before. I have, and but were they magic, Hasbro? Magic cards that were Harry Potter backed. So True. They're, they share some kind of, like, maybe card printing facility or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just check life totals one more time. Sure. Let me check life totals one more time. I'm at five. Okay. Too many Jesse's triggers. At five. Ah, at ten. <laughs> MTG with guilds replaced by Hogwarts houses. That—that <laughs> uh, that might be the best idea we've come up with, or the worst idea we've come up with. I think it's pretty dang good. Like. We, this would this would have some legs if we wanted to create an entire set with it and just like you know submit it as a proposal to wizards. We're like, hey, we could change around the name like you know Perry Hotter, and then yeah. like try to make a whole game out of this one or a whole set out of this one. All right, so you're gonna put your designer hat on now. All right, you're gonna design the Harry Potter magic card. It's gonna be a creature. We'll make it a legendary creature. Just keep it easy. What okay. colors, color or colors is Harry Potter? I'd say white and black. White and black, okay. Because it'd be like split color, it'd be the the hybrid, and it's be, just because he has you know the Gryffindor side, but also the uh, Slytherin side. Okay. And to be able to let's say channel both human, but also maybe. The, the snake death eater type of uh, you know side oh, of it. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So back to you, what would it do? <laughs> well, I was thinking that he would be white and green because he represents mm. um, fighting for good or fighting for justice or whatever, and also he has that that. Um, is it Patronus? Patronus. Patronus. Patronum. That is like a green spirit, like green magic spirit, right? Oh yeah, it becomes like a doe. That's like his his best power, right? <laughs> He's projecting. And so, yeah. is he Oko? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what what does Harry Potter do? I think he can tap down snakes or Voldemort creatures. Are snakes black or green? They're probably green, right? I don't know. Yeah, Riverbow is green, so and it regenerates with black. <laughs> there's no, there's no main characters in Hufflepuff, are there? Uh, I think there's like one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the Gryffindor rejects. <laughs> We're not even counting them. They're not main characters. <laughs> Same with Ravenclaw. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Isn't Harry a Horcrux? So yes, how can we, how can we make that a mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> when you sacrifice it, uh, destroy. Oh, you have to like sacrifice what five or six other Horcruxes or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's one of those like you sacrifice things and uh, you win the game. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe Harry Potter is five colors. Could be. Harry Potter is a wizard tutor. I think I think the card that you just described, Ten, is is the uh, Dumbledore creature card. Fetch a wizard when you cast it. Is that an actual card? Dude, our commentary has either been stupendous or stupid. <laughs> One of the two. Stupidendous. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Catherine, what's up? <laughs> oh, man. Isn't Harry a wizard, though? Well, this this creature card maybe is before he knew he was a wizard. I never specified what point in time it represents. You know, I think I have proof that Harry is a wizard because my, my wife has a shirt that says, you're a Harry, you're a, not a Harry wizard, you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's, I mean, they wouldn't make that shirt without, you know, him being creature wizard, right? Yeah. Leon suggesting Hagrid is red green. I agree with that. Although Hagrid never really gets angry. Kinnon bounced. He can get angry. He like, does? Against the Dursleys. Like when, uh, I, I remember re- or, uh, just listening to the, the audiobook and he gets angry at uh, the Dursleys when they start, you know, offending H- Harry or uh, trying to just poke him or whatever it was. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But he'd totally be like six six. <laughs> so he would be an, he would be Uro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Totally. All right. Abrupt decay on mirror retriever. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to trying to. Describe what's going on in this game for everyone. That's fair. Right. <laughs> I, I think we saw all the Thopters die from a Plague Engineer, number two. All right, so Cling to Dust getting flashbacked here. Hitting Mirror Retriever. Jesse will draw a card from that, I guess. Yeah. Probably about five minutes ago, the board position just kind of flopped or, or switched completely. Yeah, I think this showed, um, at least if the game ends how it appears it will end, Jesse's deck is much better at disrupting than Phil's deck is at going off. Yeah, Phil's deck is more about value, but the the kind of disruption that he's encountering here between swords and Abrupt Decays is really just cramping his style. Kinnon's here. Chromatic Star. Make a blue. Extra mana from the Opal because of Kinnon. Sack Chromatic Star to Kinnon. Now two blue mana. Gets an extra. Fetch. I'm just going to check life totals one more time. <clears throat> what, where are you at, Phil? 13. 13. And you're at 10? Justin? I'm at 12. 12. 12. Got it. Thanks. Close. I think there was uh, a bunch of life gain triggers and uh, little pings in between. Yeah. This game's been a little, little bit more difficult to follow on the life total side as well. Exactly. Just so many things happening. And we were so wrapped up in Harry Potter that I definitely missed a whole bunch of things. <laughs> <laughs> so how would they do Quidditch? <laughs> Scoop! Scoop. <laughs> Scoop up those snitches. Alright, let's tune into the players. <laughs> 